people say Yishun residents are weird. I know of a person in Yishun who keeps a pet crow. And maybe even dangerous. This woman was held hostage at yeah. knife point. Thank you so much for being here. It's Joachim Gomez signing out from the shock circuit. Have a good morning. I'm Joachim Gomez, radio DJ, TV host, and occasional actor. Sounds delicious. When I'm off the air, I lace up and take off. I want to explore different parts of Singapore. Particularly, neighbourhoods that seem to have a bad rap. Oh god, panic, panic, panic. Yishun does have a fair bit of crime. Are there any wow sides to these bad boys? I'm going to find out, starting with probably the most notorious one. Bring it on, Ishun! Let's go! When there's something strange in a neighbourhood, Oh, it has to be Hishun. Oh, that's where all the weird people stay. Sometimes I see some crazy people shouting. <laughs> Ishun has gone viral on social media for all the wrong reasons. People say strange things happen only in Ishun, making Ishun great fodder for content creators. Ishun was like this uh, cursed town, this jinx town. Blogger Liu Wen Kai was recording all the strange incidents coming out of Ishun from 2008. What I found out was that some of the more bizarre uh, incidents seem to happen within uh, Ishun Ring Road. Liu had given the area enclosed by Yishun Ring Road that ominous name, The Devil's Ring. Liu's webpage is no longer active today, yet Yishun's infamy lives on. I lived in Yishun from the time I was born till I was about seven. I even remember watching my very first movie at Golden Village Ishun. In case you didn't know, Golden Village Ishun was the very first and largest multiplex in Asia back in the early 90s. Now that's definitely a wow for Ishun. So when did Ishun start gaining this notorious reputation? Quite far back it seems. Throughout the 1800s, Ishun was plagued by all sorts of crime, including bloody riots between rival dialect groups and secret societies. Heritage author Jerome Lim even wrote about a case in 1847 where the police had intercepted six boats along Sungai Selita carrying cannons and a cache of arms linked to a secret society. So we look at Ishun now and with secret societies out of the way, why do you think it's not cleaned up its image yet? Ishun does have its fair share of high-profile crime cases. You know, for example, in 2008, there was this very sensational murder that involved three killings. I think we all saw this in the news, a recent case where this woman was held hostage at yeah. knife point. So would you say Ishun is a very dangerous place? Well, I think it's more strange than it is dangerous. Uh, for example, very recently there was this guy marching down this busy Yishun Avenue. Yeah, we saw that went viral. Yeah, and there was also this man who stood completely naked on a bridge at Yishun Pond. If you think about it, Yishun is a lot more weird than it is dangerous. I mean, look over there, just ends. Where else in Singapore can you find a shop that sells ants as pets? So maybe it's safe to say that Yishun isn't the crime capital of Singapore. But hey, it could be weirder than I thought. I mean, who keeps ants as pets? These are giant forest ants. One of the largest ant species in Singapore and Southeast Asia. Okay, so how much will one ant cost? Well, we don't actually sell an ant on its own. You have to actually purchase the whole colony. Mm -hmm. And how much will it cost in total? So this tank over here, is valued at around $3,000. $3,000? Why would anybody want to own an ant as a pet? Well, in my case, I have learned a lot of life lessons from them. Life lessons? 
Do you want to know more? Uh, why not we get some hands-on with our ant colonies? Sure, why not? So, well, basically we have an ant colony here that needs cleaning up. Okay. So first, we actually scrape off all the waste behind. Should be easy enough. Are you the only ant shop in Yishun? We are the only ant shop in Singapore. Why Yishun? I have lived all my life in Yishun. My kids are studying in Yishun. My wife was originally from Yishun and my parents are still staying in Yishun. I was going to ask, is the breeding ground better for ants in Yishun as well? If you say so. Okay. And then we vacuum it up, top up their water and lastly, feeding them some honey. Okay. So now that we're done with this, what's next for me here? Maybe I shouldn't have asked. Now I have to repeat everything I've just done for all of these tanks. And it's trickier than before because these ants are all out and about. No, no, uh, man, I'm not very careful. Oh, God. Panic, 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 panic. Get down, get down. How do they do this with the ants outside? John? <laughs> John? Yes, I'm here. Okay. So we try to flick them down gently without harming them. This is definitely a job that requires patience and careful concentration. Are these the life lessons I'm supposed to learn from these ants? So teamwork is one of the life lessons that I've actually learned from the ants. Mm -hmm. Everyone is out caring for one another, having each other's backs. Yeah. And I think when it comes to teamwork, you can see all the ends going towards this worm already. Another thing that is super mind-blowing is that they never ever give up. I see slightly bigger ends coming out now. So what are these? So the bigger ends are basically majors or super majors. Mm -hmm. They are big sisters. They sisters? Like, yes, the ends in the colony are mostly female. Okay, are there male ends? So male ends are not really helpful. They are not um, a team player. They have wings, in fact. Mm -hmm where they actually fly out to seek a princess during the mating season. The female does everything. The male just flies and looks for a mate. Yeah, that's right. Slackers. <laughs> I'm starting to develop an appreciation for ants, especially these hard-working female ants. I have a question for you. Do you think your shop contributed to the weirdness of issue? I think we did contribute in a way, such as we have many people coming up telling us an ant shop can only be found in Yishun. And if you think ant keeping is weird, yeah. I know of a person in Yishun who keeps a pet crow. Crow? Yes, a crow. Nope, I'm not about to go on a bike ride. I'm just making sure I have basic protection for what I'm about to face. Ah! Ah! Mm. Hey, Joki. Hi, what's Shafiq. up, man? Hey, nice to meet you. with the helmet, man? Okay, um, before anything, <laughs> let me explain myself. When I was 10, I was carrying food home, mm. right? I got attacked by crows. I think there were seven crows flying towards me. So ever since then, I have this massive phobia of crows. So for me to even be here, it's a miracle already. But how are you not afraid of crows? Iris is a very tame crow. Basically, the bond is very important between the owner and the pet. Mm. See, it's very bonded to me. But Shafiq, why a pet crow? Okay, Iris was given to me like five years ago. He was four months old. I think he, he dropped from his nest and I thought like I feed him until he's become a bit stronger so that I can release him back in the wild. But then tried so many times, he still came back to the house. Mm. So have you taught Iri any tricks? Oh yeah, I want to see how I do the coin trick. Sure, okay. Uh, but I need to close the window first. Close the window, why? Because yeah. Iri is coming out? Of course. Okay, you close the window. Okay, I'm going to stand over there. I feel safer here. Go for it, Shafiq. Hey, Joe, it's out already. This is how we do it. It's oh. massive. <laughs> oh my goodness. Okay. okay, he's very active now. I think he's okay. I thought he's scared of you. <laughs> okay, give him the coin. Ask him to put inside. Come, put inside here. If not, you will not get the treat. Oh, oh wow. Yeah. Okay, that's how it's done. Well yeah. done. Okay, good job. 
Okay, you can come back. Okay. <laughs> you might think the crow is small, but when it's flying around the kitchen, it looks massive. It looks gigantic. People. Oh my god. <laughs> How are you able to train Irie and how long did training take? As you know, crows are very smart. When I teach him a trick, he mm. can pick up <laughs> the trick within just one day. You want to try to do something with Irie? Wait, me do something with Irie? Okay, Irie's coming out again. I will try to call him out here. Irie. That's how we do it. You want to try? No, I think it's okay. It's a bit... Wow, I cannot. <sighs> okay, Shafiq. Um, so how? I think... I'll give it one try. Okay, that's Just cool. one try. So, right. what do I need to do? You just have to call his name, Airi. Come. Okay. That's okay. it. And then you just put your hand like that. So, so he will land yeah. here? Yeah. Alright, let's okay. give it a shot. I I'll stand here. Take him out, okay? At this point, my heart rate's really quick. Airi's out of the cage already. Okay, you can call him now. Okay. Airi, come. <laughs> oh, he doesn't want to go to you. Try again. Irie, come. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah. I tell you what lah. I hide. Huh? Yeah, maybe he will definitely go to you. You gonna leave me alone? <laughs> okay. Oh my god. Here goes nothing. Ay ay ay. Irie, come. Oh, it actually knows that Shafiq isn't here. Shafiq, come back, come back, come back, come back. Let's really test the loyalty. Okay, Shafiq, you call Ari one more time. Okay. Okay. Ari, come. Look at that. Firstly, I'm very impressed by the crow's loyalty. Okay, a bit too close for comfort, but yeah. <laughs> well done, Ari. Oh, yes. Yeah, okay. You know who your owner is. Okay, Sha Shafiq can put Ari <laughs> okay. back already. Okay, yes. <laughs> We had ants, we just had a crow, what next? Llamas? Oi! Go get changed! I was not expecting to be in a ping pong match, least of all with the geriatric opponent. This should be an easy game for the bronze medal. Forget the bronze medal. At this point, it's a trashing. This is a major trashing. Oh, that's the money shot. You can cut on that. Okay, that game, safe to say it was a whoop-in. I got whooped. Hi. Sir, did you know who you just played with? Um, okay. I'm guessing she might be some Yishun or local legend. Yes, she's an ex-national table tennis player. Her name is Liao Chunhua. <laughs> okay, that makes sense now. Are there any other ex-national players here? Oh yes, we have a seven-time champion, national player Chia Chong Boon. And we also have the current para national players, namely Eugene, Tek Mong, Angie, Sam and uh, Victor. Located at 813 Yishun Ring Road, this table tennis free play zone has been around for eight years and is one of the biggest in Singapore. It was set up so that more people can discover a love for table tennis and to encourage the elderly and the disabled to stay fit and healthy. Is this only open for Yishun residents? Uh, we are open to everybody and I welcome them to come here. It's nice. But why Yishun? Yishun somehow has some connections with table tennis. Lee Cheng School used to be here. They produced many national players in the 60s. And the legacy seemed to have carried on in Chongfu School. And Chongfu produces good table tennis players at the national level. And the lady you played, Liao Chunhua, she was from Lee Cheng School in the 60s. Who would have thought that a now defunct primary school in Yishun had nurtured more than 10 national peddlers decades ago? Madam Liao, I'll try it. Is this your name? 
啊，对。然后你几岁在这里？差不多十一二岁这样了。然后你几岁开始训练乒乓？差不多是一年级到二年级喽。那为什么立正学校能培养那么多乒乓国手？因为校长他对这个乒乓很很有兴趣。嗯。他每一次他叫那些小学生啊，全部来学校训练训练啊，那些小学生。成为国手了，嗯，可以看得出，刚才我们玩那个游戏，你还很自然，哎、还很 natural， 没有了，差不多有五十年了咯，因为我现在已经七十多岁了。哎，春华姐你好、啊，这个是 Mr. U， 这个立正小学啊，这些壁画、啊、什么都是由他安排，他策划的。At the void deck of Block 243 Yishun Ring Road is a collection of murals done up by the alumni of Li Cheng School to commemorate their school's glorious past. This place is the last place of the Li Cheng School. It is in the village of Chai Chi Chun. This place is not Chai Chi Chun. Let me introduce you to some of the history of the Li Cheng School. Can you? Li Cheng School was founded by the elders of Chai Ke Village in 1939. Both Madam Liao and Mr. Yeo were born in Chai Ke Village in the 50s. This photo helped us understand our home as a family. My home is here. Where is the house? This is my house. Do you remember the house? It's really great. Because there is a photo of this photo. Everyone has this spirit of the village. Kampong spirit. Okay, I get it. Yeah, it's very strong, and this map is amazing. By 1981, Chai Ke Village was entirely replaced by present-day Yishun New Town. I think it's really nice to know the history or the origins of the place you're staying at. For a place we call weird and dangerous, isn't it showing the greatest sense of Kampong spirit? And I'm about to find out how this once humble kampong is now home to million dollar properties. There's been a lot of talk about the kampong spirit. I wonder how much of that is still alive in today's Ishun. Moving, it looks like I'm late already, but let's just join in and see what I'm in for. Two. Very good. Slowly come to a stop. This is Ground Up Initiative, a non-profit organization that encourages city dwellers to be one with nature by working the land. We're going to do farming, some harvesting also. Shall we go and get gloved up? Volunteers come on Saturdays for the Balik Kampong program to work in this sustainable living kampong. I've never known myself to have green fingers. Let's hope I don't make a fool out of myself. This is as back to basics as it gets for a city boy like me. So how do you actually get involved with this? Um, I knew about Ground Initiative uh, pretty early. So I came by uh, mid-year of uh, 2014 and started volunteering with them. So since 2014 till now, every Saturday you've been every here? Saturday. With harvesting almost done, Lin takes me to try out a more labour-intensive task. You see this plot of soil here? Yeah. You prepare this plot for planting. Alright. Yep. Someone get me a shovel and let's go. Oh, this is BMT all over again, guys. <laughs> These guys! Going on way more than I can. Yeah. My back's hurting really, but he's going strong. What? Yes. Who? Yes. See, there you Thank go. Great job. Yeah. That's uh, yeah. one way to find out I've been doing it wrong for the past 20 minutes. <laughs> After all that back-breaking farm work, we were treated to a plant-based lunch made with ingredients grown right here by the volunteers. Um, why select Yishun of all places? In 2008, GY started at Lim Tukang, but it was so far away, our volunteers found it hard to travel there. So in 2009, GY came here. So we've been here for 14 years now. Wow, yes. and then shifting to another location very soon. Yes. Unfortunately, the space here is going to become a housing development. Mm -hmm. So we have been given a new space to lease, and it's still going to be in Yishun. 
So, do you all live in Ishun? Yes, I do. I stay in Ishun. So, given how notorious Ishun is... Actually, a lot of people like to live in Ishun. Mm -hmm. Do you know that there's a flat that sold for more than a million dollars in Ishun? In 2022, 370 HDB flats in Singapore transacted at a million dollars or higher. But what is shocking is that Ishun has joined the ranks. How can Ishun, bad reputation and all, command such record-breaking property prices? I'm told I could find the answer here at this Kopitiam. Alright, Diana, here you go. Oh, Drinks. Thank you. Why do you pick to meet here? Oh, this is no ordinary Kopitiam. Mm -hmm. It was just sold in June 2022 for $40 million. $40 million? Yes. So imagine the per square feet here is much higher than any of the ground floor retail units along Orchard Road. Mm -hmm. So is this the most expensive Kopitiam in Singapore? Yes, definitely. At 9000 over per square feet, this is definitely one of the highest transacted Kopitiams in Singapore at this point in time. Looking at the food prices, right? I dare say it's not so expensive. Yep, so that can only mean that business here is good and it could be because it's right next to Khatib MRT Station uh -huh. and it's also 24 hours. Ah, okay. I hear that some units here in Yishun have transacted for over a million dollars. I mean, if you tell me Bishan or Bukit Merah, I completely understand. But issue? So let me just clarify. Basically, all the units that were sold above $1 million mm -hmm. are the jumbo and multi-generation flats that are 1,600 square feet and above. Interestingly, these million-dollar flats are all situated well within what Lu Wenkai christened the Devil's Ring, Yishun's hotbed of crime and bizarre incidents. Who buys these flats? Okay, they are people who have grown up here, so they really want to move back into this neighbourhood. Mm -hmm. So it's a little bit like homing birds. They are familiar with the place and they really want to be closer to their parents. So in fact, if you remember, President Halima Yaakob used to stay in Ishun as well. And it took us so long just to get her to move into the Istana. I mean, she is the most famous Ishun girl here in Singapore. I'm pretty sure she helped make Ishun great again. For me, Ishun is like that one oddball friend we all have who has plenty of weird habits that we make fun of. But actually, deep down, we are all curious about those habits. And once we get to know them better, we have a newfound appreciation for that person, which leads us to become very loyal and defensive of that one weird friend. And that's Ishun to me.